Ryan, it's very much going to be a trip down memory lane and, you know, from Chris's point of view, how many years? 28 years are we 28, talking about? 28 yeah. years we're talking about here. Yeah, I mean, I've only, I've only known Denise the least out of everyone. I've known her for about four years now. Um, but it is something that what Holly said, you know, there is something about Denise that you do want the approval from Denise. And when I joined the show, you know, I was very much a rookie rookie at that point and didn't expect to be on this show. And she was always there to say, you'll be all right, you know, don't worry, pet. And we had a little joke and she'd always, she, she, if she saw me talking to Sharon or any other woman, she, she'd come up to me and go, who do you think you are? I'm, you told me I was your only woman. <laughs> yeah. And I go and put my arm around her. She loved you. I know, I lo and, mm. it, and it's gutting, not only you. Know, she she always and I'm not... could tease with us, didn't she? Because well, Eamon would always try and say to her, Denise, you'd come and he'd go, Denise, I need to talk to you about my marriage. You know, well, I did. <laughs> I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed to say I sought her advice. For instance, I mean, once I was on air, when my wife confessed on air, what a marvellous time, exotic, erotic, time she had in Venice <laughs> well, what a brilliant time we had in Venice and I said I've never been to Venice darling. <laughs> I've never been <laughs> and I had to seek <laughs> professional advice from her really. and what and did she always say to you you'd be nothing without that nothing woman. about she that never, woman she would never side Richard Maidley's phoned in Richard Richard Hello, good morning Richard. yeah good morning I mean and Judy's here as well oh yeah. good good um, sad day a very sad day, although, as Phil said, you know, we, we could all see it coming. So it hasn't come as the kind of the blindsided shock that, that poor Ronnie Corbett's death hit everybody with yesterday. But, uh, yes, it's in incredibly sad. But, as always, with, with, with larger-than-life characters like, like Denise, I mean, quite, quite joyous, actually, because it gives us all a chance to look back on this mm. incredible life well-lived. Because the thing about Denise is she did something that we all strive to do and very few of us manage. She actually made a difference. You know, um, she, she gave really wise counsel, not just over the phone lines, but privately to people. And, and we both always thought that she really was probably, never mind probably, certainly, the best agony aunt in the business because she was the most genuine. I mean, she really meant what she said and she really cared. And she's been giving that advice, as we said, um, you know, back in the days in Liverpool with you and Judy in 1988. Judy, what's your, what was your first impression of Denise? When you, can you remember your first meeting? Oh, Judy, can you hear me? Hello. Hello, Judy. Sorry, it was oh, really... hi. hi. Sorry, I was just... got I was some just weird saying... time lag going on here. Sorry. Um... I was just saying, what can you remember your first impression of, of uh, Denise back in 1988 when you first all met in Liverpool? Yes, she was, she was very um, self-assured, I thought. Uh, oh. Incredibly self-assured in her own skin. Um, she was... Um, she was absolutely 100% genuine. She never sort of affected to give uh, advice. She just was, was you know, full of good words and good faith. And um, I was also astonished at how hard she worked, but even off screen. Mm. She would obviously take the phone in um, on screen, but off screen she would be on the phone uh, for the rest of the day uh, talking to people who had the most, some of them had the most horrendous, horrendous problems. Um, and uh, she, would, she would never give up on them and she would work with them, um, you know, for, for absolutely ages. She was a very genuine woman, a very self-assured woman. Uh, as I say, very self-contained. And and we were tremendously fond of her. Yeah, yeah. And, and she wasn't afraid to shed tears and let people see, Judy, that she would mm. share their pain and shed those tears with them. No, not at all. No, she, she used to cry quite openly, actually, on telly and, and off it. Um, and she always did, because Christmas, she, she was aware that Christmas, if you were on your own, um, you, it could be the most terrible time of year. Um, she always gave a special little Christmas address on, on our last show before Christmas, and she would just talk people through it, the fact that it was only one day long, mm. and the fact that it would kind of... Um, everything to get them through. And she had quite a lot of pain in her own life as yeah, well, yeah, which I yeah. think made her able that. to um, to appreciate what it was like to be lonely and, um, you know, and bereft, if you like, at Christmas. And she was, she was just fantastic agony. I'm the best of her generation, absolutely, without doubt. Hey, she appreciate was. you two lending your voice to this today, because obviously very important that we hear from, from you as well. Thank you guys very, very much indeed. Yeah.